Who are the top five players on the Baltimore Ravens roster on offense and defense as it currently stands? We talk about that and more next year on Locked on Ravens. You are Locked on Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And we return here with another episode of Locked On Ravens, your daily Baltimore Ravens podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Ostriker of Ravens Wire. Of course, we're here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen of the day. We're free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube. And we're back. It is a Thursday edition episode. And we're going to be diving into some rankings today. Now, I know. Rankings vary from person to person. My rankings might not necessarily be your rankings, but here today we're going to be talking about the top five players on both offense and defense for the Ravens roster right now. So this is not a historical all-time list. That'll be something we do later, but today it'll be more of the roster as it stands at this moment. So on Thursday, June 30th, the top five players on offense, the top five players on defense. Then at the end of the defense, we'll talk about my list of top five players overall on the roster. So we'll talk about offensive guys in the second segment, defensive guys in the final segment. We'll do honorable mentions as well. In the first segment, though, I do want to talk a bit about some tight end rankings that came out from former Ravens tight end, now Las Vegas Raider tight end Darren Waller. He talked about his top five guys on a podcast recently, and there was a reaction from Lamar Jackson to the news. And I want to talk about those rankings a little bit where I personally rank my top five tight ends. He, he got the players right, but I just think the order a little off in my opinion. So again, it's all opinions, all varying opinions. So again, I'm interested to know your your rankings for all this stuff. If you want to comment down below on YouTube, if you're here, listening video form, you can message me or comment on something on Twitter. You know, I'm interested to see your ranking as well for tight ends, for offensive guys, for defensive guys. So again, tight end rankings in the first segment with Darren Waller. Then we have offensive top five guys in the second segment, defensive top five guys and overall top five guys in the final segment. But if you're here with us on YouTube, thank you so much for tuning in a video form. Again, we hit 2,000 subscribers yesterday. Really just incredible stuff. And I want to thank everybody for their support. You know, if you've subscribed, I greatly appreciate that. If not, there's there's still time. You can still do it, I promise. We put out Daily Ravens content five days a week. So if you want Ravens news, analysis, opinions, and much more, we have that five days a week. The grind never stops here on Locked On Ravens. But if you're here to listen audio form as well, you can follow along with us there, whether it's Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. It's the same show, both audio and video form. You can turn notifications on there as well. So be sure to subscribe on YouTube and follow along in audio form, whichever you prefer. Again, same show there. Also be sure to follow me on Twitter at kaushaker34, the Locked On Ravens account at Locked On Ravens as well. Let's talk about this, these, these tight end rankings from Darren Waller. And um, yeah, again, just in my in my personal opinion, a, a little off. So Darren Waller ended up going on the All Things Covered pod and talked about his top five tight ends and lead the best, in his opinion, top five guys. So at number five coming in here, we have Mark Andrews. Number four, Kyle Pitts. Number three, George Kittle. Number two, Travis Kelsey. And number one, Darren Waller. And honestly, I respect his confidence for putting himself number one. Like that is a mentality you should have. Like you come into, you know, the situation you are for him, Las Vegas, where again, got his career together, you know, very inspiring stuff for what he was able to battle through there to get his career back on track. But again, that, that confidence that he has to put himself number one, I, I respect that. I respect that confidence. You know, he thinks he's the best in the game at his position. It, it's actually pretty important to have that confidence to believe that you're the best, especially when you're up in that upper echelon of guys. You know, there's not necessarily a huge, massive gap surrounding a guy like uh, George Kittle, Kittle and Kyle Pitts or something like that. So I agree with the players you put on the list. I just think the order, again, it's not not what I would do. I think when talking about his rankings first before getting into to mine, I mean, putting Mark Andrews below now a second-year player in Kyle Pitts is... is I don't want to call it disrespectful. I know he didn't mean like disrespect by any of this stuff. It's like truly what he felt and and that's great and everything. But again, Mark Andrews proven track record over the course of his four year career in Baltimore, playing in a very 
run heavy offense for the majority of his career as well. So, you know, you look at guys like Travis Kelsey and George Kittle and well, George Kittle also plays in somewhat of a run heavy offense, all things considered. But again, all these offenses are different. So Kyle Pitts, again, high flying offense there in Atlanta last year, going into a second season. I just think putting a player like Kyle Pitts over Mark Andrews based off the pure track record. I think Mark Andrews, again, very talented. People look at Kyle Pitts. They look at the intangibles, you know, look at the speed, look at the size and everything. Mark Andrews, very deceptive traits that I feel like just aren't, I don't want to say aren't respected because he is regarded as a very good tight end in this league, top five, top three category by most. But Andrews, to me, a player who absolutely is a top three conversation. My top three, I mean, it's Kelsey Andrews and Kittle in terms of guys who I think are in the top three. I think that for me, Kyle Pitts comes in at number five. Then you have Waller at number four. For me, it's it's about not just the, the pass catching numbers. What can these guys do as blockers? Do they impact the game? You know, what what's the overall attention level they get from defenses? With Mark Andrews, especially, I mean, going into this year, but also previously we've seen that defenses have either keyed in on him or Marquise Brown. As the, as the years have gone on, it's kind of shifted a little bit more towards Mark Andrews and Marquise Brown had opportunities. Sometimes the attention was on Brown, right? I'm not saying it wasn't, and there are different players covering a wide receiver versus tight end in most situations. But also I think, you know, a lot of the attention, is it, is it on Tyree Kill? Is it on Travis Kelsey for the 49ers, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, right? All these different things. Well, for the Raiders, Darren Waller, still very talented guy getting a lot of attention because the Raiders didn't really have a ton of pass catching weapons outside of Waller. Hunter Renfro was there. They did. They just got Devontae Adams. So that's not factored into this. But still, they're in, they're in Atlanta too. Kyle Pitts, they had Calvin Ridley last season, but again, stepped away and everything. So, and, and obviously suspended this year. So th there's that to talk about. So I think that for me, Kyle Pitts is number five. I think again, sky high potential. I just don't feel right putting a second year player over guys who already established themselves in the NFL. I just, it, it doesn't feel, unless Kyle Pitts had this like, you know, 2000 yard rookie season, 15 touchdowns, you know, 150 catches or whatever, like all those different, like a best tight end pro bowl, all pro type year. I, I, that's not enough. That would that would be what would be enough to put him in the the top four, top three for me. I think Pitts is number five. Waller at number four, very very good pass catcher. Someone who really elevated his game and again got his career back on track in Las Vegas there. So someone who I think very very good, but to me not top five, top three material. Excuse me, more top five material in this situation. Coming in at number three for me, I know a lot of people have Mark Andrews here. I do not. I have George Kittle at number three. I think that, again, once you get into the top three, the Kelsey, Andrews, and Kittle, in my opinion, very little gap between them. Like, you could easily rank Kittle over Andrews or Andrews over K Kelsey or Kelsey over Kittle or Kittle over Kelsey or whatever, all these different combinations. I think the gap level is very, very tiny when it comes to this. But I think the Kittle for me comes in at number three. What I kind of, I don't want to say knocked him for, but some of the reason I don't have him more in the top two, maybe even the best tight end here, is the fact that he hasn't necessarily been entirely durable over the last couple of seasons. I mean, did play 16 games in 2018. That was his second season in the league, but it's been pretty banged up. And again, I'm not like holding injuries against the guy, but again, it kind of lowers the sample size. The stats don't look as good necessarily. I mean, in 2020, again, only had 634 yards, but only played in eight games. But that year, actually, he had the second highest yard per reception total at 13.2. His best was in 2018. That was his best year, 2018. We had 88 receptions, 1,377 yards, and five touchdowns. So for me, I think Kittle's a player, again, also very good as a blocker. He's someone who is very physical, and that's a part of it, too. Again, I talked about that. It's other aspects besides, oh, how many yards, how many touchdowns. It's, again, impact on the game, impact as a multidimensional player. I think Kittle has that, definitely. Someone who is absolutely in the top number of tight ends in this league. But for me, he's my number three, number two and number one is where I, I, it's so, it's so, so tough. If you ask me who the best tight end in the league was last year, Mark Andrews, hundred percent. Mark Andrews was the best tight end in the NFL last season. Obviously with the accolades he received, he was the, he was the best. I mean, 107 catches, 1,361 yards, nine touchdowns. If you want to compare that to Travis Kelsey, Kelsey had 92 receptions, 1,125 yards and nine touchdowns there. So Andrew's the better, the better statistical season. He had the better, I think, impact overall. And plus the fact that the Ravens are going through so many injuries, the fact that he was able to put up all those numbers with 
a very, I'd say, not a carousel of quarterbacks, but multiple different quarterbacks. Lamar Jackson missing time, Tyler Huntley having to miss a game. He played with Josh Johnson for a game. So Andrew's far and away the best tight end in 2021. In terms of overall, I, again, it's like a 0.1 difference for me. But I'm going to say Kelsey number one just because of the experience. I mean, Kelsey, his numbers outside of 2013, which was what was his rookie season, unbelievable. Hasn't had a season below 875 yards since 2014. I mean, a guy who has had one, two, three, four, five, six consecutive 1,000 yard seasons, hasn't had a year below four touchdowns in that span. He's a player that is overall absolutely incredible, but so is Mark Andrews. I just think I'm going to, I'm going to give it to the guy who has the, the, the track record here of all those thousand yard seasons of that impact for, you know, Kelsey's had it for a ton of years, ever since 2014. Andrews really, you know, pretty decent rookie year overall, right? I think burst onto the scene then a little bit, but then again, not the thousand yard years. And I don't, I don't want to base everything off of a thousand yard season, because if you look at it, what are the offenses? Mark Andrews playing in a very run heavy offense. He doesn't have as many opportunities to get the ball as a Travis Kelsey does. So I also factor that in. I understand that both are phenomenal players. It literally was so close. So, you know, I could have come on here and literally like changed my mind. I changed it probably 10 times while I was talking just in the course of this first segment, but I'm going to go my top five rankings are Kyle Pitts, Darren Wilder, George Kittle, Mark Andrews, and then the, the top two is very close. One is Travis Kelsey. So those are those are my opinions there. I think Wilder's ranking of Andrews at number five, just, just a bit outside, in my opinion. I think he deserves to be in that top two conversation. Absolutely. We're going to head into our first break here, though, on Lockdown Ravens. Still a ton to talk about. I'll make it back. We're going to be diving in to the Ravens' top five offensive players at their roster right now as it currently stands. So be sure to stay tuned. Still a ton to talk about here on Locked On Ravens. First, though, I do want to tell you a bit about Rock Auto. And with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your luggage and auto parts to stock of the parts you need wire and from pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer. It's using the only brand the warehouse happens to carry. You have to use access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. You can save time and money when using Rock Auto. They're a family business. They've been serving your suffers for over 20 years and the prices are a lot below. For every customer. So go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. All right, locked on. The had you hear about us, Box Lino. We sent you amazing selection of live below prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. We're back. Our second segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Allstriker, your host, still here with you. Again, thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube as well as like the video and follow us in audio form too. But let's dive into the top five offensive players on the Ravens roster right now. We'll do some honorable mentions in there too. Just kind of go down the list for me. And again, very tough decisions overall. Some easier than others, obviously. But I think for me, obviously, number one, it has to be the legend of Trace McSorley. No, I'm kidding. Number one's Lamar Jackson. I mean, you, you can't say anybody else. He's the heartbeat of this team. He's the, he's the soul of this team. He is absolutely incredible, both as a passer and as a runner, the dual threat ability that he has. He is by far and away the best player on this team. And there are other very talented players on the team, right? But it's just, I also factor in like premium positions, you know, and not, it's not to say I'm going to discount somebody completely because they don't play a position as important as a quarterback, but we all know what Lamar Jackson is at this level. He is a star, an absolute star, someone who can impact the game in so many ways, someone who has won the Ravens so many games in so many ways different ways. So I think that for Lamar Jackson, it's, it's kind of a no brainer in my opinion. I know if it wasn't Lamar Jackson, there are the other guys we'll talk about on this list, but I just, I don't have a clear argument as to why I would put a guy like a Mark Andrews, number one, or Ronnie Stanley, number one, when the impact that Jackson has is just out of this world. So for me, Lamar Jackson, definitely, definitely number one for me. And then number two, we have the guy I talked about, in the first segment coming in again at number two with Mark Andrews. And he's a player that obviously so talented in so many different ways. And some of the stuff that I talked about in the first segment, will you know, kind of flip flop into this segment too. But one of the areas I've been most impressed with, with Mark Andrews is not just the pass catching ability that the, the touchdowns, the yards or whatever, it's his ability as a blocker coming out of Oklahoma in that 2018 draft. I mean, wasn't really recognized as a blocker, very, you know, pass catching guy was still decent at it, but he, he was known more for his pass catching and that ability. And I think in the first couple of years of the, of his NFL career, we saw that, all right, Mark Andrews is the pass catch guy and Nick Boyle is the blocking guy, right? It was, it was kind of like, all right, we're not going to necessarily 
run the ball to Mark Andrews side because we don't have confidence in him as a blocker yet. I think that's kind of what was happening a, a tiny bit during the first couple seasons. But then, and also this is a credit to McBoyle too. I want to, I want to shout him out too. What Andrews did in terms of his blocking over these last couple of off seasons, the past couple of years, what Nick Boyle has done with his pass catching ability over the past couple of seasons, it's no longer two opposite, complete different sides where it's like, all right, Andrews is only a pass catcher and Boyle's only a blocker. Now, Andrews still a better pass catcher than a blocker, but he does block well now. Nick Boyle still a better blocker than a pass catcher, but he does catch the ball now and does it very well. So I give a lot of credit to those two guys. And just because guys are coming in at number two on these lists, number three, number four, whatever, doesn't mean they aren't extremely skilled and extremely talented players, right? Just, you know, back in the first time, just because Mark Andrews comes in at number two, barely to Travis Kelsey, in my opinion, doesn't mean I don't think the world of him is a player and also is a person. That's a different story. But he, he's someone who I think is absolutely one of the elite players in this league. And on the Ravens, to have him as your number two guy to Lamar Jackson, it's a pretty nice thing to have. So I'm very impressed with what he's done. The drops of it's been a tiny bit inconsistent with the drops, I will say. And that's, that's part of his game. I know he's been working on, but it's not necessarily, you know, the, the worst issue in the entire world. So for me, Mark Andrews comes in at number two. And by the way, I should have probably mentioned this, but this is a fully healthy roster, right? Everybody's fully healthy. Everybody's fair game here. I'm not going to discount a player like Ronnie Stanley, who comes in at number three, because we don't really know his status. Ronnie Stanley's my number three player here. Such an important part of this offense. And obviously we saw what it was without Stanley last season. It wasn't great. <laughs> I think that's a pretty nice way of putting it. The offensive line struggled immensely without him in there. And he is, he is the best player on that offensive line by a, a decent margin, not saying they don't have talented players there, but what Stanley brings, his mobility, his ability to get out in space, his anchor and pass protection, his physicality. He also has some finesse to him too. I think people kind of discount that finesse aspect to his game. Someone who very consistent, you rarely, you rarely see mistakes out of him. And I think that showed when obviously Alejandro Villanueva had to play over there. He had Patrick McCary playing at right tackle, Tyree Phillips. And McCary played decently well, like don't get me wrong there, but when McCary started to get hurt towards the end of the season, and, and really it was Alejandro Villanueva and Tyree Phillips, the tackle started to just cave in every play. Lamar Jackson running around, his clock gets sped up. The decision-making, I think, fell off a little bit because of just the pressure he was under in terms of every single play. It was, all right, Lamar Jackson has to scramble again. And I'm not saying he can't make anything happen. He's one of the best in the league at making things happen when, when the play breaks down. But we've also seen what he does is a pocket passer. He's a great pocket passer. So you want to have him protected as best you can. Ronnie Stanley gives them that. There's a reason they paid him $100 million. And it's unfortunate that the injury that he suffered happened, what was it, like four days after he signed that contract. So we haven't really gotten to see him on the, you know, the new big money Ronnie Stanley out on the field outside of week one against Las Vegas last season that obviously he wasn't fully healed. So Ronnie Stanley's my number three guy. All pro tackle when healthy, someone who is so important. And again, a lot of these guys can be flip-flopped a bit. Lamar Jackson is pretty up there in terms of number one for me on offense. Like I, I don't think I could be convinced otherwise. Maybe if someone wants to try, I'd be more than happy to listen. But I, for me, Lamar Jackson is pretty cemented at number one. But then again, once you get down to the Andrew Stanley, you know, some people might have Stanley two and Andrews three. Others might agree with me and have Andrews two, Stanley three. So we'll talk about that a bit more as, as we head into the final segment and get into the overall players. But number four is th this is where it becomes a little bit more difficult, but I'm going to say number four to me is Gus Edwards. I think that obviously Edwards has the track record, something I did talk about a bit in the first segment, the track record and why I have him above a player like JK Dobbins in this instance, Edwards is a player who has averaged insane numbers over the course of his first couple years in this league obviously we were pretty robbed of seeing him in 2021 it was really unfortunate but the ability for him to average such an, an amazing yards per carry number the ability for him to be able to add on to his game every single season that's that's one of the things i love about gus edwards i've talked about it before gus edwards has added on to his game every single season and i was excited to see what he could do as a pass catcher it seemed like that was what was coming in 2021 but Coming out uh, out of Rutgers and being an undrafted guy, very north-south runner early on, but then we saw him adding cutback ability, right? Not just running north and south, kind of moving a little, a little bit and figuring out, all right, well, if I can't just go straight up the middle, I can move it to the right a little bit, cut back this way and go here. Then we ended up seeing the pass catching ability come through a little bit, and I think we were just scratching the surface of that before his injury. Also, a lot of different good things that he's added to his game as well. 
know, finishing ability, which he obviously had at Rutgers too. But I think that Edwards to me is a player that again, in the, in this offense and for, for these lists, when you talk about every team, it's not just, Oh, well, where's Edwards ranked based off of the, the chiefs or the bills or the Patriots offenses are, are different. Every offense is different. The running back position for the Ravens is more important than a lot of teams in the NFL, honestly. So they value those guys. And for me, I also factor that in. So I'm going to say Edwards at number four and then J.K. Dobbins at number five. This this spot, there could have been a couple other guys. I'll talk about those briefly in a second. But Dobbins, a player that his rookie season was just phenomenal. And also should have probably mentioned this too. I'm just going to be throwing out points as we go. I'm not factoring rookies in here. So when we get to defense, Kyle Hamilton is not going to be on that list. He hasn't played a snap yet. So I'm, I'm not factoring in rookies at this point. That's just how we're going to do it. So J.K. Dobbins, for me, a player that, again, 25 carries through his first six games. But when he got carries, it was, all right, 30-yard run, 40-yard run, 25-yard run, 38-yard run. He, he pretty much – I know the Ravens wanted to go with the Ingram and Edwards duo with Dobbins kind of factoring in. But Mark Ingram struggled in 2020, and J.K. Dobbins was just ripping off these runs. I don't want to say J.K. Dobbins forced the Ravens to play him because obviously there's no like forcing here, but he was playing too well to not get more snaps and obviously ends up breaking the Ravens' rookie touchdown record, averages the most yards per carry among his position during his rookie season with six yards per carry. Just unbelievable stuff from him. So, again, we were robbed of seeing his second season. I think it was going to be – I thought it was going to be an absolute breakout – it took a lot of me to not put Kevin Zeitler on this list, a very underrated player, someone who had a great season as a guard last year in this offense. First year should have been a pro bowler, in my opinion, a pretty big snub there. Rashad Bateman, someone also I gave consideration to. S- some maybe sneakier options. Nick Boyle, I think, as a blocker, means so much to this team on the offensive side of the ball, so you could add him in there too. There are a couple others, but those are really the main ones that I, that I focused on, but my top five list for offense for right now on the Ravens, Lamar Jackson one, Mark Andrews at two, Ronnie Stanley three, Gus Edwards at four, and J.K. Dobbins at five with some honorable mentions being Kevin Zeitler and Rashad Bateman in there as well. So again, if you agree with me, if you don't, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. If you want to put it in the YouTube comments, at me on Twitter or whatever you want, I, I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. So we'll head here into our last break. When we get back, we're going to be Talking about the defense, obviously. Talking about my top five list there as the roster currently stands. So be sure to stay tuned. Still a ton to talk about here on Locked on Ravens. First, though, I do want to tell you a bit about Bet Online. Bet Online is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and sports info. You can find all the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news, including Major League Baseball. NBA free agency is here. It's here today. I'm a Denver Nuggets guy. They made a big trade yesterday with the Wizards. I know there might be some Wizards fans in the chat or listening or watching. Here today, uh, Will Barton and Monte Morris were huge parts of what the Nuggets did over the course of their, I guess, ascension to being a contender. I'm excited for what KCP and Ish Smith can bring there. But BetOnline is your continued source for our sports, wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for our sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. But it is the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. As the website today, use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. We're back here. Our final segment of Locked On Ravens. Kevin Olszewski, your host, still here with you on this fine Thursday. Thank you for making Locked On Ravens your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, like this video on YouTube. Also, be sure to follow us in audio form and make your second listen Locked On NFL. Again, I did the Monday show over there, so if you want to check that out, I highly recommend it. It was really fun talking to guys around the network. But let's now dive into defense. In defense, it's it's a bit trickier, I think, for the defensive side of the ball as it stands right now than on offense. But I, again, number one for me, I have Marlon Humphrey. Humphrey is the best player on this defense, in my opinion. Obviously, the year he had in 2021, I don't think speaks to the player that he actually is. And a lot went into that. He did struggle, did have some just mental errors, some things that didn't go his way. Wasn't a great year for him overall based off of the expectations that everybody had for him, labeling him as one of the best corners in the NFL. I still think he is. I think he is still the best player on this defense and a player that, again, the positional versatility that he has on defense, especially the Ravens love their versatility. Humphrey proving that he is an elite outside guy, but also elite in the slot. So if you want to use him, if you have to use him in different situations, you have a player that has shown he's he's, he's saying, Hey, yeah, I can go out there. I can play outside. I can, I can challenge these guys in the slot, whatever they need him to do. He can do it. A very physical player. Obviously we know about fruit punch and his, his famous forced fumble track record, which I know 
again, that play style is contagious. And, and obviously, and I think we've seen it, everybody like everybody plays like that on that defense now. They're going for the ball, forcing the fumbles. Marcus Peters is somebody who I think kind of a, almost like adapted that from Marlon Humphrey. And he was a guy who forced some fumbles over the course of the first couple of seasons he's been here in Baltimore. So Humphrey's a guy that I, yeah, I, he's my number one guy, despite the fact that I know the year was not great for him in 2021. I think he's going to bounce back in a big way here. Number two, I'm going to go a bit. I'm going to go controversial. I'm going to go controversial. And you might be thinking, Oh, what is he about to say? <laughs> I'm going to say Marcus Williams is the number two player on this defense. Williams, the big acquisition from the new Orleans saints, a guy who has played for five years in this league Great track record. Someone who is that deep safety. You can play him in single high. He, he can come down a little bit. He's a physical player, but you have him roaming in the back half now alongside Chuck Clark and alongside Kyle Hamilton in that secondary. He is exactly what the Ravens needed. And I know, again, like the, the, the whole thing, that if you want to joke around with him, and I know people do this all the time, is, oh, it's a, oh, what happened against the Vikings in the playoffs, you know, during his rookie season all that stuff, it, he has said it doesn't mean anything to him. You know, he has moved on from that. And it's a great mentality to have. He's a player that is very mature, obviously friend of the show, and someone who I very much enjoyed talking to. If you haven't watched that interview a couple months ago, I got the chance to talk to him, and it was a it was a great, great interview. And he's a player that I think fits in very well, but the talent level on the field, he's just now entering his age 25 season. Somebody who, again, has a lot of room to grow still, but has established himself as one of the best free safeties in this league. So I'm going to say Marcus Williams is the number two player on this defense and then followed by Marcus Peters at number three. Peters is somebody who, again, regarded as a top 10 quarterback in circles, someone in a top 15, top 20, however low you want to go there. I think he's personally a, at least at the very least a top 15 guy in this league when he is fully healthy. Someone who has immense ball skills exceptional football IQ, a very smart person, smart player overall, just understands the game in a different way. And that provides value because we saw him during the 2021 season. Obviously he couldn't play. He was on the sideline helping out his guys, figuring stuff out, very competitive player too. And that stuff rubs off on people. Again, it, it, that mentality, that competitiveness, it rubs off. Now, isn't the best tackler in the world. I think he's he's done a better job at it in Baltimore than he did in Los Angeles or Kansas City, but he's not, he's not somebody who's going to just stand up and like just tackle all the time. Sometimes he, he's a little bit on the, the wiry side, so he's not necessarily this huge. He's not Marlon Humphrey. He's not Marlon Humphrey's body type, is what I'll say. So – for him, he more he works on finesse more. He's somebody who, again, very sticky. And I think the Ravens system just fits him a lot more than Los Angeles did. And it has helped him. I know in Los Angeles, people, when he was coming over to Baltimore, said, oh, he's burnt toast. Like, he's, he's never going to do well in Baltimore. Well, I think the system in Baltimore fits him a lot better. So, for me, I say Marcus Peters at number three. Then you go number four. I'm saying the vet. I'm going Clayus Campbell at number four. So, the very, very dominant player. Someone who I know the interior – pressure numbers, the sack numbers haven't necessarily been there, but one of the best run defenders in the league, still, still very hard to single team. You usually have to throw a double team at him in order to actually slow him down. And that opens up other opportunities for guys across the board. So it's not just the box score impact. It's the, the traits they bring, the ability to make the guys around them better. Clayce Campbell as a leader, obviously someone who is very widely respected, not just in the Ravens locker room, but throughout the entire league. So Clayce Campbell to me is somebody who, again, he's, you know, he's entering, he's, he's decently old at this point for NFL standards, but I do think that what he brings to the table both on and off the field is extremely valuable. So I'm saying he is my number four guy. Number five, this one, this one could have gone to a, a different, host of people. I'm going to say it's Tyus Bowser. I'm going to say Tyus Bowser is the number five best player on this defense. Obviously very important to what the Ravens do, the versatility, the skill set that he has. He can rush the passer. He can drop back into coverage. He does so many things well. And I know I've talked about this before, but the, the career trajectory for Tyus Bowser early on was not great. He, he was able to pull himself up. And again, I, I always talk about the Tyus Bowser, Tim Williams situation where pretty make or break years for those guys. And Tyus Bowser ended up again, performing well. Tim Williams did not. The Ravens get rid of Tim Williams. Tyus Bowser gets rewarded with an extension. He's somebody who at this point is the Ravens number one outside linebacker. Now, obviously he's injured. We don't know when he's going to come back, but I just think what he brings as a pass rusher, as a guy who can drop back into coverage and play those snaps, he he's versatile. He's a player that the Ravens, he he's just 
I don't want to call him a glue guy because I think he is more than that. It's like with Chuck Clark. Like, I don't want to call him a glue guy because he is more than that. He's a good player. He's not just, oh, he's he's for the chemistry or he's just an average player. Those guys are both good people, good players. But I think for me, Tyus Bowser is somebody who is vastly underrated. And I think like Ravens fans, people who cover the Ravens, watch the Ravens, understand how good he is in terms of what he brings and, and the underratedness of that. But people around the league, I think, underrate him. So for me, I, I'm giving Tyus Bowser some love coming in at number five. But Honorable mentions, Adafi Elway could have been put there. Patrick Queen could have been put there. Chuck Clark could have been put there. I'm not factoring in Kyle Hamilton. I said I said that before. No rookies here. So, again, my, my five defensive players are Marlon Humphrey, number one. You have Marcus Williams, number two. Marcus Peters, number three. Clayus Campbell, number four. And Tyus Bowser, number five. But let's now, if you if you stayed and listened, you, you get the bonus part for staying tuned in here. But my top five overall Ravens players are going to add a new face in, and you might know who that new face is. But number one, it, it to me, is Lamar Jackson. Again, he is the best player, the, the heartbeat of this team. Number two, I'm going to stay consistent and say Mark Andrews. I'm going to say Mark Andrews is the number two guy. Number three, I'm going to put Marlon Humphrey at number three and push Ronnie Stanley down to number four overall. But then number five, we have Justin Tucker. Yes, Justin Tucker to me is the fifth best player on this team. There's an argument he could be number two. Like there is a very good argument he's number two on this list. And I understand if he's number two on your list. Uh, he's a player that people don't like people don't look at kicker as like a premium position, right? But it kind of is because you can you win or lose games with your kicker in, in a lot of situations. Justin Tucker has won plenty. Plenty of games with this team. And again, it's like, it's again, the gap situation where obviously again, Lamar Jackson is like kind of entrenched there at number one for me, but the two through five guys, I could see arguments for flip-flopping them all different kinds of ways. So my personal list is Lamar Jackson, one, Mark Andrews, two, Marlon Humphrey, three, Ronnie Stanley, four, Justin Tucker, five. But I'm again, really interested if you have defensive rankings, you want to put down in the comments, overall rankings, you want to put down in the comments very interested to hear about it also if you want to talk to me on twitter or that way we can do that as well so anyway you want to get that to me i'm very interested to hear if you have any of those differentiating opinions maybe the same opinions as me but it's a very interesting topic interesting conversation and i think for the ravens they have a ton of talent on this team and, and we'll again get into the all-time list we'll do that sometime before the season kicks off i don't know when exactly but this was a fun episode i enjoyed doing this i hope i hope you enjoyed it too just listening or watching in here. But that's all I have you here today on Locked on Ravens. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll get back in tomorrow. I'll be diving into more Ravens content, rounding out the week. So be sure to stay tuned for that, and I'll see you here tomorrow.